This is a video about how to build a patio cover for you DIY people at home. Let's make it short and quick, so let's roll the intro. First things first, when it comes to a lot of projects at the home, is gonna be demo. So that was the uh, old patio cover that we removed. And once we removed it, we got our skidster out here and our jackhammer or breaker and just tore up this concrete. It literally goes through it like nothing. If we had a close up, yeah, look at this, like nothing. Easy work with the Caterpillar. But first things demo, then we got rid of all of the concrete, sent it to the landfill. I'm not too sure what they do with it there. I think they probably break it up, put it in the ground but here's what it looks like when it's all gone and then we formed for concrete we dig dug some big footers per the engineer here's us screeding the concrete it's very simple screed then bull float then hit it with your fresno or just some steel on a pole and uh, then you're just on your hands and knees finishing it off with some steel or a mag whatever you got and make sure you put some joints in there or get somebody out there with uh, a cutter and put some you know cut some joints into it I like cutting better but here's what it ended up looking like. They're actually gonna put some tile on it, so it's gonna be covered up, but I thought it looked really good. We did those corner grooves for that giant footer because it could crack. And uh, we also poured a driveway, but that's on the point. But when it comes to framing, very simple. It's two posts on the outside. When you cut the post, or I should say, when you set the post in position in that little bracket at the bottom, it's a Simpson bracket, I'm gonna show you what I bought. But when you set it in there, it needs to naturally sit plumb, or else you're not gonna have like, the, the bearing point's gonna be leaning on one side of the, the pole. So make sure you cut it flush so it just sits flush on the bottom and it's plumb. But we got this material lift from Home Depot. You rent it at Home Depot or maybe like a rental near you. It cranks the beam into place. And I already know you guys are gonna say, what kind of beam is this? What's the size of beam? What's, what's the span? I did this project a long time ago. But here is what the Simpson hardware looks like we threw on there. And I don't believe it's $13. I think it's like 20 or 25 bucks per piece. Maybe it is. Uh, the screws are expensive. But yeah, don't be asking me about that beam because I don't know. It's been a long time. If I were to look at it right now, I would say that's five and a half by 12, probably by 26 feet. But uh, yeah, so once we get it up, we brace it with our form board. That's not the board we use. It just holds it into place. So, you know, it's a safety thing. But look at those brackets on the post, post to base and post to beam looks really good but we're gonna show you here in a second how we do this detail of these rafters the rafters are not sitting on the top plate they're actually sitting up on the roof which is bearing on the truss uh, so here I'm gonna show you guys in a second in person what right, it looks couple like. details I want to show you guys of how I attach how I attach this patio roof to the existing house now, as you can see here we have a 312 pitch on this house right here for the shingles and we're attaching a 112 or a three-quarter 12 pitch to the house. So come take a look here. Here's our two by six rafter. Oh shit. The GRKs are screwed into this trusses. So there's trusses lined up right where these rafters are hitting the roof, okay? There's GRKs as you can see right here and right here. GRK is going into every truss right where this is. So the bearing point of this rafters right on the truss. So the weights and the force is distributed right into the truss. Now we're attaching hurricanes on every single one as a hold down and as a backup from the hold down for the hurricanes. Every single tail of the rafter also has a structural lag screw going into every single one of them. So the tails are held down. This is held down by the H25s. And now we have a strong hold down right here. Make sure when you cut your rafters, it's a flush cut. So it's bearing correctly. That's really important to do, flush cut. Don't make it all awkward and like, like an amateur hour over here. Flush cut is what you need. So here's pretty much the overview of the entire framing. You wanna make sure you crown your boards, those rafters on top, make sure you crown them. Here is a zoom in of the bird's mouth. Now it's professional to do a bird's mouth, but you DIY people, you could probably just lay the rafter on top and not be a big deal because it's such a low slope of a roof. But there is what it looks like. Make sure you put blocking in between your rafters. I have to do it in Arizona per code. 
So this is an important part. You want to make sure you have a helper throwing you the boards up or else it can be really arduous. But you're going to put some plywood up. We like using 1932 seconds plywood, but you're totally fine with OSB. You're just throwing them up, put them in place. And you know you did a good job when you, when you did the roofing when your plywood's just lining up as it should go. And you want to make sure your nail patterns, I believe it's probably 6 and 12 inch all the way around. And this is kind of what you end up with. We have other videos showing you how to roll roof, but I mean, check it out. The ceiling is like nine or 10 feet and you have this beautiful product at the end. It's pretty straightforward. Go ahead and stain it, paint it, do whatever you want. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave it down below. Make sure you, make sure you subscribe and as always, have a nice day.